Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I'm going to show you how to write your own files using Node.js. Now, kind of the use case here is we're going to be creating some fake data using several different NPM packages. So you're going to learn how to use NPM packages, how to use Node.js to write a file. And then in the end, you'll have some fake data that you can loop through or use like when you're building out a client site or something like that. And you want to just go ahead and get the structure in place before you have any data from the user. Now, it's really quick and easy to do. As you can see here, we've got a whole 23 lines of code, not even all of which is required. Um, but what I can do is come in here and just type a node and then the name of the file, and it will generate the file. And over here, you see I've got now 10 users that have names, addresses, emails, phone numbers, different posts they've written, uh, account history to whatever account they might have. That's one user, those 75 lines. And because I've done it here programmatically, I can quickly create uh, like a thousand users like this and go over here to Node.js, do it again, and it will just write a thousand. And as you can see, it's now a massive file that it's even taking a while to style. So if you want to learn how to write your own files with Node.js and along the way get some fake data that you can play with, go ahead and keep watching. Let's jump right in. All right then, so I've got an empty directory open on the left here in a code editor, and on the right, I've got nodejs.org opened up. Uh, this is just a reminder, you do need Node.js to, to use this because we're writing things in Node here. And uh, you can just download this latest version. If you think you might have Node on your machine, you can just open up a terminal and type in node-v. And as long as something comes back that's 13 and above, you should be fine with what we're going to do today with the syntax we're going to use today. Um, but make sure you grab that. All right, the next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and say npm uh, init-y and that will create a package.json file. We're going to use that in just a second. Uh, we also do need a file. Uh, let's just say touch, uh, which is the same as creating a file here. And let's call this, uh, let's see, generate fake data.mjs, just like that. Now, by calling it mjs, we're creating it as a module. And that's one of the ways that you can uh, do this in Node 13 and above. So that's what we've got going on here. That allows us to use a little bit more up-to-date syntax. All right, now there are two dependencies we're going to use, and this is a also a kind of a helpful tutorial for just using learning how to use npm packages and things like that. So what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to grab this install script from Faker.js, and I'll include links to all these in the description. You'll just install it like that, and then Coder Ipsum as well. And both of these uh, are pretty cool because they allow you to just grab random data from. This one's cool because it's like programming type words. Uh, the Faker JS over here is just all kinds of data, and I'll show you how to use that. Uh, there's tons and tons of stuff you can do with that. Okay, so we've got everything installed that we need. Let's go ahead and open up this right here. Let me pull down my uh, terminal, close that. Okay, so we, we're going to need to import several things at the top of the file to be able to use them. And the first one will be import uh, fs. So this is a default node module here from fs, like that. And then we're going to, let's come over here to Faker. JS, they tell you how to do this. So for usage here, it's saying, okay, so this is the old syntax here. Because we're using 13 above, we can actually just say import faker. And notice how I'm replacing var faker with that, no equal sign. And again, from, and then in, in uh, quotation marks here, uh, faker, like that. And that, that will work just fine. Uh, now, if I come over here to coder ipsum, here they give you both ES5, which is what the old node is, and ES6. So I'll just import that. Uh, let's say we're not going to use Madlib, so we don't need that. Not like it would really hurt anything, but we don't need it, so let's not pull it in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an array, first of all. We'll call it let posts, and we'll set it to nothing right now. And we're going to push some items into this, and that will generate our file for us. Uh, because we want to set how many numbers of posts we're going to use, we'll say const uh, number of uh, posts. And this will allow us to control if we want to create five or six or 10 or whatever. Let's do 10 to start with, and then we can change that later. I'm capitalizing all this just out of convention. Usually when you have like a true constant, you set it as that. Now, maybe you wouldn't count this as a true constant, but um, I'll let you decide that. All right, next we need a function that will generate an object for us. So we'll say function, and then typically by convention, these are capitalized. So we'll say post like that. And then inside here, we're going to set several properties on this object. For now, let's just create a user ID for each of these posts. So we'll say this.user, and then inside of this object we're creating, we'll then have an ID property, 
And uh, let's see, let's set it to, let's create another constant up here, or another variable. Uh, we'll be let, and it'll be, we'll just call it user, user ID, like that. We'll start it at one, and then we'll come in here and say user ID uh, plus plus. All right, so it'll just add one each time it runs through that, uh, and that should work for us. And then let's come down here and write a little simple for loop. So we'll say for let uh, i equals zero. And we'll do as long as i is less than our number of posts, then we want i plus plus. And in here, we're going to say posts dot push new post like that. And that should generate a new post for us. All right, so when we run this file now, what it's going to do is it's going to loop through as many times as we have, so 10 times here. Um, it'll loop through and create basically a new post each time. Each post will have a user object in it, uh, and it will have an ID property of user one, and then user two, and then user three, et cetera. All right, so now here's the magic part. We need to actually write this to a file, and we can do this using Node.js. And that FS that we imported includes a method called write file. And inside here, you need to give it a few items. First of all, we're going to need to give it a place to store all this, so a name of the file. So let's just call it sample, uh, or how about fake data JSON. Next, we're going to be passing it a JavaScript object. And in order for JSON to interpret that and for it not just to read out object object, we actually need to stringify it. So we're going to say JSON.stringify, stringify like that. And then we're going to pass in a few arguments here. So we do need to pass in, first of all, and most importantly, the actual thing we're giving to it. So that would be our posts. Now, there are a couple of other arguments, but I'll show you those in a second that we can pass in that are optional. All right, finally, I want to say if there's an error, let's go ahead and handle the error. So if there's an error, why don't we just console.log, uh, there was an error. And then else, if that's not the case, we'll console.log uh, file successfully written. Okay, that should be good to go. Now all we need to do is come down here to our terminal and we're gonna say node and then the name of the file. So generate fake data.mjs. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if we did this correctly. Well, we forgot a very simple thing, which is an equal sign. Let's try again, save it, come here, and file successfully written. All right, great. So let's open the sidebar here and you'll notice we've now got fake data.json. If I pull this up here, I've got fake data for user one, two, three, four, all the way through 10. Just that's how we iterated uh, on this user ID variable. All right, now you might be saying that's not super styled. How am I ever going to read what's going on there? Well, it's compressed, which is what you'd want um, when you're generating this. But just so you can kind of see what's going on, why don't we add a few more things uh, to this json.stringify uh, method? So first of all, let's come over here and go to stringify, see JSON, like that. Let's look at the docs here. And you'll see that they tell you there's a few things that you can pass in here. A value, that's what we've passed in, a replacer, and a space. You'll notice that the value is required, and these two are optional. We don't really need the replacer. Um, that's going to alter the behavior of the stringify process. We don't need that. What we do want, though, is to tell it how many spaces uh, to insert, and that will basically style it to make it more readable, as it says uh, right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, so to pass null here, we'll just bypass that replacer, and then we'll say two. All right, so let's do that and rerun that and open up our fake JSON. You see now it's all stacked out two white spaces at a time, which makes it much easier to read. All right, so that's how you actually write files. And uh, if that's all you wanted, then Thanks for watching. If you want to see some fun stuff with generating this data, stick around. I'll show you how to use these two packages. All right, so let's jump back over here and let's first of all look at this faker.js. Now there's a ton of cool stuff you can do in here, uh, but basically it's going to generate random stuff for anything from addresses to animals to commerce to company, uh, database stuff, data type. You can do dates, uh, just fake itself, which I don't remember what that does, different financial information. As you can see, there's just tons of stuff, images, internet things, uh, random stuff. So they, they show you how to do a lot of this here, but let's just kind of think through what we might want in a fake user. So if you've got a user, we probably also want a, a name like this. And so let's come up here and see if there's anything with name. Uh, let's see, find name, that's not helpful. Skip past all these, city name, street name, company name, finance, Username, 
Okay, how about this? First name and last name. So let's do that. And let's create uh, an array here. And inside this array, we're going to have two items, two objects. So we'll have a uh, first name like this. First name, you don't have to name it that, but since that's what it's named here, I'm just going to use the same thing. And then all we have to do is pass faker.name. This is the category it's under, dot first name, first name, like this. And then it's actually a method, so we're going to leave it just like that. And then let's go ahead and say we want, in addition to this, we need a comma here. This is still inside our array. Uh, we also want last name, so we'll say last uh, name like this. Okay, so with both of those in place, let's run our thing again and see what pulls up. All right, so now each of these have a name array with a first name and a last name. So again, you can do this with all kinds of stuff. So let's say we've got an avatar. So we'll come in here, let's see, uh, avatar, and where was our avatar, avatar. Okay, so it's under image, so we just say faker.image.avatar, like that. And then if I save it here and run it again, I'll come over here and now each of them are gonna have an avatar attached to it as well, which is just some little fake headshot from uh, this faker's website, the faker package. All right, and then uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can add, as you can see. In addition to having like a user property, I can just jump out this way, or a user object, I can jump out this way and have something totally random. Here's where I'm going to show you how to use Cutter Ipsum. So Cutter Ipsum basically just has four little helper functions. We're only, only going to use actually two of these. Uh, we don't even need paragraph. I'm not going to use that today. Um, and all you do is pass it anything and a number, so like sentence seven or phrase four, that will spit out seven sentences or a phrase of four items in it. Or like if you did paragraph, you could do two paragraphs. Uh, so basically, uh, they just said, hey, they were building out some stuff for a tech workshop. They realized it'd be better to have Coder Ipsum rather than just random uh, Latin words, which I think is kind of fun. So that means we can come in here and let's add two properties here. And the first one will be a title. And we're going to set this to, uh, what was that? Just our phrase, maybe? So a phrase of... Let's have four, something like that. And then below here, we'll have a summary of the post. We'll do sentence like this. Uh, and we'll do like two to give us a sentence of two items. And let's do this. Oh, I need a comma here. And I need a comma here. Okay. And then let's go ahead and generate this. File successfully written. All right, so we've got a title now and we've got a sentence. All right, now I must have misunderstood how that works. Let's see. Sentence. Optional words to include, not sentences to include. So let's do that. So let's come over here and we'll have at least, I don't know, 39 words. All right, and then let's go ahead and run it one more time and open this up. All right, there we go. That's a proper summary. And it's styled like a sentence with a capitalization and a period. Now they do mention that some of the words in here are more than one word. So you might be saying like you passed in four and it's giving you five. Uh, well, some of these will just be four. Some of these will be five. So like this one's four. It depends on what they count as a word in here. And they, they mention that in here, that some of the words are more like little bobby tables. All right, well, more power to you. Now let's jump over here and I'm gonna show you one more thing. And we're just gonna erase all of this right here. All right, and then I'm gonna jump over this way and they actually have a way to generate what's called a random card, all right? And this basically will do a lot of your work for you. So you can just say this dot, uh, I guess, post is equal to, and then we'll say faker.helpers.createCard. What this is gonna do is it's gonna create basically everything you might want. So let me run this again, and we'll jump over here and open our fake data. And you'll notice that now each of these posts has a post, a name, username, email address, address, geolocation, phone number, website, company, different posts that they've written. So this might be, maybe user would be a better thing. We'd call this uh, this dot user. And then let's try it again, since technically it looks like it's more of a user. And so this card includes everything from here all the way down to here. So account history, different posts that they may have written with summaries and longer sentences. And of course, this doesn't include our cutter Ipsum, but it's just using the fake JSON data. Now, as you can see, these don't really make sense. Uh, we've got South Dakota in the country of Nigeria, and I'm sure this doesn't match up either. And I'm, I doubt this phone number matches up and this is some random website, but uh, you get the idea. It's creating this fake data that now you can loop through in your projects or when you're trying to display data for a client, when you're building out a site, just to show them what it might look like before you've got real data from a client.
I hope this was fun and informative of just how you can use Node.js to create files and also how to make your own fake data. Once you make your own fake data, you can use it to practice your different array methods or your object methods. These are the kinds of things that really help sharpen your skills is just forcing yourself to work through data. A lot of front-end development is just this, taking data from some API endpoint and cleaning it up and then using it in your site. So play around with this some, let me know what you make, and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.